free c-a-l-u-v dot com the california love business recommendation tool you're listening to eat drink explore media's market fresh live every thursday evening right here on crush 92.5 fm now broadcasting the heart of downtown San Luis Obispo. Here's your host, Randall White. And a very good Thursday evening to you as we kick off another live edition of Market Fresh here on the Crush 92.5 FM. Beautiful San Luis Obispo. A little bit humid today, San Luis Obispo, for a bit there. I'm your host, Randall White, sharing my passion for fresh foods with you each and every week. Hey, the official start of spring, by the way, the vernal equinox hits this coming Wednesday at two minutes past four in the morning, so I'm sure you'll all be up for it. (laughs) Uh, But uh, yeah, that means goodbye winter and hello fresh asparagus. Uh, That's always my favorite uh, spring dish to come our way. Hey, a quick programming note, uh, just in time for the start of spring, this show is expanding to an entire hour uh, starting next Thursday. So uh, stay tuned for that. We'll begin broadcasting at 5 o'clock instead of 5.30 so you can uh, tune in, catch us then and watch a video simulcast of the show online live if you like or following the program at eatdrinkexplore.com You can use our free smartphone and tablet apps as well. Uh, we broadcast Market Fresh from the heart of downtown San Luis, or slow, right above uh, Higuera Street between Osos and Moro, so we can watch and listen as the city's famous farmer's market comes to life. Our goal is pretty simple, to get you in touch with the acronym FLOSS. You got that? FLOSS. It stands for fresh, local, organic, seasonal, and sustainable. Choose whichever one you like, <laughs> or all of them. Uh, just FLOSS once a day. We're physically at the uh, downtown slow Thursday night farmer's market, but we highlight offerings available at any one of your favorite San Luis Obispo or Santa Barbara County markets. We'll even go outside the Central Coast if there's something really interesting. This edition of Eat, Drink, Explore Media's Market Fresh is brought to you by California Love. That's a website designed to put you in touch with locally owned California-based businesses who consider the state's economic, environmental, and social health as part of their business model. And if you visit caluv.com today, you can add your business to the listing absolutely free during the site's beta testing period. Once it's there, it is free for the life of your business. Let your potential customers know that you're locally based and are one of the many reasons California has a lot to love. Visit caluv.com right away. All right, it's time now to check in to the Market Fresh Grapevine for the very latest news affecting the fresh food and beverages beverages rather that you love. And uh, listen to this. Pairing a little oregano with your tomatoes may do a lot more than just enhance the flavor. A study published recently in the Journal of Food Science shows the essential oils found in oregano can help inhibit the growth of salmonella. In addition, researchers found the oregano oils help increase the quality of the tomatoes for storage purposes. They literally gas these tomatoes with uh, these oils that are found. Cinnamon bark and mustard essential oils can also be used as salmonella inhibitors, but in the testing, they did not show the same quality preservation characteristics found with the uh, oregano oils. Uh, Grapevines are getting close to bud break in some areas of the state, according to the latest California crop report by the USDA. Uh, Hey, check our Facebook and Twitter feeds for a link to a great video showing time-lapse bud break. It's pretty amazing to see how alive these plants actually are and the way the new buds twist and turn. In the uh, Sacramento and San Joaquin Valleys, almond trees are in full bloom, about a week or two behind schedule, however. Meanwhile, pruning is underway for almond and pistachio orchards. All right, listen to this list. Garlic, asparagus, Italian squash, and spinach are growing nicely with some warmer weather. Those all sound good, even together, (laughs) for that matter. And look for a wide variety of winter harvest veggies at your farmer's market, including beets, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, turnips, green onions, herbs, or herbs, choys, you know, like your bok choy, chards, and the, I don't know, it seems to be the sweetheart right now, kale. Kale. 
A brand of radicchio grown in the Salinas Valley is now certified as an antioxidant superfood, along with, you know, blueberries, pomegranates, green tea, spinach, and broccoli. The third-party company doing the superfood certification is SCS Global Services. They're based in the Bay Area. Joining us on the line right now to explain more... And whether you should be adding more radicchio to your salads is SCS President Stan Rhodes. Welcome to the program, Stan. Oh, I'm glad to be part of it. So, you know, I've, I get these spring mixes, and the radicchio is part of that. I didn't realize I was, realize I was eating a superfood. Uh, how do you qualify as superfood? Well, what we have done is we've actually tested set, uh, 10 different lots of this particular brand of radicchio in accordance with FDA labeling guidelines. And we found that uh, this particular radicchio has 159 milligrams of what we call essential antioxidants uh, per 100 gram weight, which is a, you know, a little bit more than one serving. Okay. And how would that compare to some other foods that we already think of as superfoods? Well, um, you know, if you take a, a green tea, for instance, mm-hmm. Um, it actually, uh, the average composite green tea has about 117 milligrams per cup. So this radicchio, uh, you know, is yeah. actually uh, more, has more essential antioxidants than the well-known green tea, which has been, you know, re- you know been widely, uh, you know, circulated yeah. as the, is the, is the uh, antioxidant uh, source of choice. Sort of the go-to, but now everyone's going to be rushing out and getting radicchio at their farmer's market. <laughs> I well, think now, that's... See, now, though, the point is, though, that radicchio, uh, the antioxidant concentrations can vary very widely. Ah, okay. Uh, and so they can be, you know, radicchio can have very little or it can have very uh, high amounts. So, so this Royal Rose brand that you tested, uh, do they crossbreed them in such a way that they have higher levels? Well, I think, uh, you know, they grew it organically. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we do know from the University of California uh, Davis research is that when you don't spray uh, crops with pesticides, it turns out these antioxidants are the immune system of the plant. And so the plant's lazy. If you use a lot of pesticides and it doesn't produce a lot of antioxidants, and if you take those antioxidants... I mean, take the pesticides and remove it from the production side, then the plant will enrich itself with, uh, with antioxidants. So one of the great benefits of uh, organic production is these increased uh, antioxidant uh, densities. Yeah, because the plant's sort of stressed out with, without the pesticides, so it does. It produces more of that. study just came out. In fact, a study that bolstered the one out of uh, Davis. Now, finally, I want to ask you, the, the USDA, they're not doing this superfood certification the way they do organic certification, so it's important to have a third party like your company do it? Yes, I think we do um, uh, bring uh, that third party sampling and testing protocol so that the consumers know that, you know, it's not a self-claim that, that verified it, make sure all the lots are, are done. But it is a, a tested food product claim, so a competent lab can help a grower uh, find out where they're at and, and, and see what kind of levels they have in there. All right, Dr. Stan Rhodes, with S, the president of SCS Global Services, Royal Rose Radicchio. Look for it in your store. It's your newest superfood. Thanks for joining us, Stan. Sure, anytime. All right, and stick around, everyone, because just after the break, we'll give you some uh, your market forecast. We'll let you know what entertainment is uh, coming up at tonight's Thursday night market. But before we do all of that, we are going to learn about coffee grown in California. What? Yeah. Hey, locavores, listen up. Tell your friends to tune in to Crush 92.5 FM right now. Learn about locally grown coffee. We're back in just a moment. I'm your host, Randall White. It's Market Fresh on Crush 92.5 FM. California business owners, entrepreneurs, farmers, authors, and other professionals, this message is for you. We're looking to highlight those of you who give back to the community, care about the environment, and have the health of our state as part of your business model or focus. Our new California Love website is in the beta testing phase. So during the next few months, we're offering free listings to qualified people or business entities. It's a win-win situation. You help populate our site with quality, locally owned, 
California companies, and we help direct customers to your business or product. Simply head over to caluv.com. That's C-A as in California, L-U-V as in a cute way to spell love.com, and enter the information for your business today. Why wouldn't you? It's easy and it's free. C-A-L-U-V.com, the California Love Business Recommendation Tool. You're listening to Eat, Drink, Explore Media's Market Fresh, live every Thursday evening, right here on Crush 92.5 FM. Now, broadcasting live from the heart of downtown San Luis Obispo, here's your host, Randall White. That's where we are, indeed, right in downtown. It doesn't get any more downtown than where our studio is, directly above Pete's Coffee on Higuera between Osos and Morrow. If you happen to be in the area, look up. You'll see us broadcasting here. It's easier when it's dark out, but now we've done the time change. So uh, you can't really see all the lights on as well. But uh, this is segment two for our Market Fresh Report. Uh, Thursday night, Farmer's Market underway just about. The food vendors can start selling in about 15 minutes. The farmers, uh, 610 is the time. That's when the bell rings and they can start selling you their produce. And while we're live every Thursday night here at this market, our goal is to highlight local and fresh ideas from throughout San Luis Obispo and Santa Barbara counties. So if you run a weekly market or you're a chef, a bartender, a grower, sommelier, artisan, producer, whatever, let us know so that we can share your angle on fresh and local. You can follow us on Facebook or Twitter. We're at eatdrinkexplore.com. Send us an email. It's really easy. Radio at eat drinkexplore.com. Now, last week during this segment, we featured San Luis Obispo's Bliss Cafe and shared a vegan curry masala recipe. You can catch that interview and get the recipe on our website, eatdrinkexplore.com. This week, we are featuring something very unique, something you've likely never heard of, a coffee that is grown here on the Central Coast. Jim Shanley from Shanley Farms joins us now with more information. Welcome to the program, Jim. How you doing? Great, and I got to tell people, when he arrived, he had a handful of goodies. They looked like little, um, really tiny jalapeno peppers, uh, almost, and or, or more like serrano peppers. And But when you cut them open and then squeeze them, a bunch of little tiny balls that almost look like uh, caviar came out. You bite down on those, and it's like a citrus explosion in your mouth. 
Yeah, they're finger limes. We've been growing them uh, for about seven years. We were the first people in the United States to actually plant trees. We have them on two farms, one of them in the San Joaquin Valley, one of them on the central coast here outside Morro Bay. So you just like to grow things that most people aren't growing. <laughs> we, we do the stuff everybody else doesn't do. Right. <laughs> but we do some stuff people do. We have, uh, we have avocados as well. Yeah, and how can you not? Avocados are so delicious. Uh, so I imagine most people, when they learn that coffee is grown here locally, wonder how you can possibly do that with the climate. Is this, is it a special strain? or? Uh, if you read the books, we can't do it. Uh, and in fact, no one has except for my partner, uh, Jay Rusky. Jay is, has a farm outside Goleta. Mm-hmm. And about seven, eight years ago, eight years ago, I believe, uh, he uh, was in, in a conversation with a researcher at uh, the University of California. And they decided they were going to take several varieties of uh, named varieties of coffee that were known to be uh, ex- things that uh, were, were a little bit out of the ordinary. They took conditions that were a little bit different, and they took some other strains as well, and they gave it a shot. And Jay's a, a fantastic farmer of organic uh, produce. Jay went to Cal Poly, didn't he? Jay did go to yeah. Cal Poly. A poly grad. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, yeah he, he decided to bite the bullet, and uh, through trial and error and a lot of work uh, and some help from the research community, he has been able to grow uh, six different varieties of coffee on the farm in Goleta. And we have now jointly as uh, opened a nursery uh, in Goleta where we're going to grow coffee plants. And our first commercial offering of coffee plants to other farmers is going to be about 14 months from now. About 14 months. What is the, what is the uh, fruit cycle of a coffee plant? Uh, Jay's better at this than I am, but, uh, because I'm still learning lots of stuff, but uh, I believe the first fruit, you'll get some precocious fruit second or third year, you fourth or fifth year, you can expect, uh, a, a substantial yield. And, uh, after that you'll get uh, a full production. Now they turn into little red berries. Cherries, they're called. Cher- okay, coffee cherries. Yep. And uh, do they start as a flower that looks, because we're looking at some pictures for those watching the uh, video simulcast, these flowers look almost like jasmine. Yeah, they, they do flower like all plants. The uh, Again, I forget the word, but there's actually two coffee beans that grow in one cherry. Okay. So when you when you pluck a cherry that's ripe, you you may or may not have seen coffee shows before, and the ripe cherry's got a red color, mm-hmm. and uh, the texture changes as well. But then th- that has a husk on it. You take the husk off, and inside are two coffee beans. And those are the green beans that everyone is using as once again another superfood, right? <laughs> that's, that's correct. <laughs> yeah. And and actually, I've, uh, again, in this process of learning uh, with Jay and starting the nursery business, we. Uh, uh, the cherries themselves uh, actually have a, a really nice flavor, and the antioxidant uh, capabilities they're sought after for uh, drinks. We re- we've already had discussions with people that might want to use that part, which is right now a waste product of the processing. And so these uh, coffee plants are growing right in the midst of avocado orchards. Yeah, we're uh, the name of the nursery hasn't been established yet. We're we're tossing names back and forth, but we're we're working with things like layered agricultural systems, uh, symbiotic, <laughs> because there's a everything we do in terms of the plants in the nursery it has a symbiotic relationship with another plant. Oh, okay. Coffee in nature is an understory uh, plant that really likes to be protected by other trees, other uh, other things in the in the environment. And so Jay started one of the things that he did because of our wind conditions, our cold conditions in the winters, things like that. He planted them in a uh, an older avocado orchard that really wasn't the most productive avocado orchard in the world, but he does other things on top. So that's what we're calling layered agriculture, and we're going to be teaching other growers how they can produce more income streams from the same acres. And I would imagine in some cases the plants help feed the other plants where the, whatever they have breaks down into what the other plant There's needs. There's certainly that sort of thing going on in the soil and sometimes between plants, but it's it's hard for us to know exactly what those relationships are yet. We, we had a long discussion today, in fact, about the uh, the fertilizer, the, f- the feeding requirements of, uh, of the plant system, because that's what we're doing is we're layering, we're layering things together so that we can do more than one thing on the land and uh, utilize it better and produce 
uh, different and delicious things. So a year and a half from now, where will we find this? At farmer's markets? Uh, those potentially. Jay participates in his own business in farmer's markets in Santa Barbara. Uh, we participate in the farmer's market in, in uh, Santa Monica mm-hmm. as Shanley Farms for some of our exotic specialties. Yeah. And uh, locally here, we may participate in more, but that right now, that's what we do. Well, you have so many great products, Jim. We need to have you on time and time again. And like I mentioned uh, before, the show's expanding to an hour so we'll we'll have a larger chunk of time set aside for you i want to hear uh, about some of the other products that you're growing and then we'll get updates on the coffee as well jim shanley shanleyfarms.com you can find a link to it at eatdrinkexplore.com jim thank you so much for being in studio with us today thanks for having me randall all right stick around everyone we have your street report with nicole coming up next it's market fresh on crush 92.5 fm California business owners, entrepreneurs, farmers, authors, and other professionals, this message is for you. We're looking to highlight those of you who give back to the community, care about the environment, and have the health of our state as part of your business model or focus. Our new California Love website is in the beta testing phase. So, during the next few months, we're offering free listings to qualified people or business entities. It's a win-win situation. You help populate our site with quality, locally owned California companies, and we help direct customers to your business or product. Simply head over to caluv.com. That's C-A as in California, L-U-V as in a cute way to spell love.com, and enter the information for your business today. Why wouldn't you? It's easy and it's free. C-A-L-U-V.com. The California Love Business Recommendation Tool. You're listening to Eat, Drink, Explore Media's Market Fresh, live every Thursday evening, right here on Crush 92.5 FM. Now, broadcasting live from the heart of downtown San Luis Obispo, here's your host, Randall White. All righty, time once again to check in with our eyes and ear on the street. I guess ears, you have two ears, Nicole. (laughs) Market Fresh reporter, Nicole Powers, who has our look at... Well, we've got the entertainment lineup for tonight's market, a little added information on one of the vendors you might see there. And in fact, Jim, our guest we just had on the show, grows avocados, and you're going to be talking a bit about avocados as well. So, Nicole, take it away from your perch there uh, high above the Court Street shops. Oh, you know what? uh, We're not hearing Nicole. Hold on one second. 
We're going to check in with you again here, Nicole. Oh, you know what? She pulled her earplug out. <laughs> So she can't uh, see that we that we can't hear her. Um, you're gonna have to wave her down there, uh, Anthony. While Anthony does that, I want to tell you about something that uh, came across my desk here. Recent to- live performance oh, on NBC's okay, Parenthood. Um, they're rock, pop, and alternative. On Garden Street, now Randall, I know you remember this guy. His name is Lord of the Cello, and he is the electric cello player who also performs in the gothic medieval battle armor. Um, He's even performed on The Tonight Show and at Cirque du Soleil. Fourth, on Choro Street, we have Lauren Radis, acoustic and folk music artist. He writes and performs all his own music and is inspired by artists like Iron and Wine, Elliot Smith, and Damien Rice. Now, lastly, on Morrow Street, we have the Crustacea Jazz Band. Randall, you, Anthony, and I saw them after the show last week, and they were really fun. Mm -hmm. Um, They have six members, really of all ages, playing the washboard, the violin, saxophone, tuba, keyboard. They have vocals and much more. Um, So with that, I think we'll now move on into our spotlight. And Randall, you mentioned that we were talking about avocados, and I would like to talk about avocados too, um, at the Rigetti Ranch in Edna Valley. Now the Rigettis are longtime avocado growers. Ernie Rigetti is 95 years old, and he's been an avocado grower for over 70 years. Yeah. The ranch date backs, dates back to 1890. Ernie inherited from his father, and he will also be passing it down to his children. Every single tree on the ranch is hand planted, hand pruned, and they pick every single avocado by hand. Um, they grow three different varieties, or they're most known for those these three varieties, the bacon, the Haas, and the Zutano. The bacon variety is a medium-sized avocado. It has lighter taste. The Haas is a y- grown year-round. Most of us are familiar with this avocado. It can be really large and it has a really full taste. And then lastly, the Zutano avocado, it's distinctive by its shape. It's skinnier and it kind of is shaped like a pear and it also has a very light taste. Um, and although they are well known for these avocados, they've recently gone into another endeavor and they've dedicated 50 acres of their ranch to growing wine grapes. Um, and so they're growing Chardonnay and Pinot Noir grapes and their land is really fertile and has been really good for these grapes. It's also higher than a lot of the other local lands and so they've been producing very full and complex wines. Um, but if you want to find their avocados, you can find them in Slow tonight at the Thursday Farmer's Market or at the Saturday Farmer's Market in Slow. Yeah, I've bought their uh, avocados at the Saturday Market, and uh, their land sits just above the Edna Valley back there. It's so right. incredibly beautiful. Uh, one of the other things that they grow, I didn't know about the wine grapes, but mm-hmm. about three years ago, I had an opportunity to visit with the Rigettis, and uh, they grow something known as a Cherimoya, which we'll have That's on. Right. We'll have it on the show because we're in Cherimoya season right now. We're getting yes. near the end of it, so uh, we should uh, feature that coming up just because it's such a unique piece of produce that you can find at the local markets and you find it from the Rigettis. They're one of the very few people Mm -hmm. that uh, that do that, Nicole. Hey, can you do me a favor and just touch on the first two uh, people that are in the entertainment where we didn't have your mic up and I want to know, I don't want those people, I don't want them to miss out. What were the uh, first two? So our first was on Napolo Street, Banjo Dan. His name is Dan Mazer. He's a banjo player and a multi-instrumental performer from Paso Robles. And then the second one was on Broad Street, North Star Session. And this band, um, I was saying, has a very impressive resume. Their music is used on in film and on TV. And their latest was a live performance on NBC's Parenthood. Oh, okay. Um, and cool. so they're a rock, pop, and alternative band. Yes, that's right where we came in on you. So, uh, great lineup at the market tonight, and it is absolutely yes. beautiful. I need to get to the uh, forecast, Nicole. So, uh, this is Nicole's last night. Thank you so much, Nicole, for Thank your you, help. Randall. She has school endeavors she has to get on with. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with the time we have remaining, let's give you the uh, market fresh forecast. And uh, in a word, nice. That's right. Temperatures uh, at 6 o'clock right now, we're looking at 65 degrees for the start of the market, which is really beautiful compared to what we've had. Uh, Really, this is the warmest night for the market that we have had yet. Uh, Then at 9 o'clock, it chills down to 56 degrees, and that was pretty much the starting temperature for every market from January 1st through now. 
Uh, the skies, partly cloudy, just those uh, milky clouds that moved through a little touch of humidity. Uh, the winds, 7 to 14 miles per hour out of the north west but we're nice and protected here in the downtown and so uh, i'm looking out the window right now and i'm not seeing any wind at all it looks like it'll be a busy market tonight though already on the street picking up with lots of people getting ready to take advantage of all the fresh produce we're spoiled to have here in san luis obispo thank you again to nicole powers for all her help over the last year and good luck with her endeavors and for you listening on crush 92.5 fm don't forget next week we start at five o'clock for a full hour of market fresh thank you to anthony renaro on audio and jim shanley of shanley farms i'm randall white You've been listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio program. If you missed any of our segments today, look for them online or through our free Apple and Android apps. Catch you back right here next week.